Hey folks, Craig Levati here with the Houston Museum of Natural Science. I am inside the Morian Hall of Paleontology, and today I'm going to learn how associate curator David Temple cleans dinosaurs. Now, I never thought I would be up close and personal with Stan, one of our most popular T-Rexes here. And so you actually need to get really up close and personal with him to clean him. I get up close and personal with all of our mounts in here about three times a year. Now, it gets dirty really quick. Is Are Houstonians dirty? What's, uh, what's the deal here? Okay, that's gonna be loaded, and that's gonna be a weird <laughs> thing to say. Filthy Houstonians, okay. filthy, but, filthy. But when you have a big but, hall like this, there's a lot of dust and dander There that is, comes there up is. With... So we probably have three million people People a year come through Got here, it. and you don't really think about people this way, but people are shedding. So when people come um, in here, you know, and they're they're you know in big groups, and they're you know in awe of some of these creatures here, they're actually shedding, and that means you need to eventually they clean are. these guys. So what you may wonder about dust. So this is what it is. So if, if we look at him, and he hasn't been cleaned in a while. Oh, you're petting him. I'm petting him, but you can see right yeah, there. Yeah, okay. A little bit of dust. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to do that for all amounts. Okay. We have to clean and dust them. Don't so, try this at home. Do not try to touch Stan. No, you shouldn't try of, to touch any of the mounts. Any of our fossils it, here in the- Don't the, touch <laughs> any of the mounts. So when people come in here and they shed, if they shed like a lizard, it'd be great because then we just need a push broom. Because if yeah. you've never seen a lizard or a snake or whatever, it's really neat, really, really easy, just big chunks. Yeah. People, it's fine, fine particles of dust. And that's and all course, in the air here. It's all in the air here. And then the other component of dust is a lot of people like blue jeans. So the most, the two most common components of dust are uh, blue jean fibers and human skin. Actually, human skin is the, is the most. So once we dislodge the dust, uh, then we, I've got other dust collectors that are sort of- To suck it up. To suck so it up. So it doesn't so, go in somewhere else. Right, so got a it. lot of it will be taken up through the HVAC system here and get deposited on the museum's air conditioning filters, which they have to change those, just like you change yours at home. Mm -hmm. Only you may have to do one every six months, and we, or three months, and we have to do hundreds. Because you know, every, we have every, millions of people coming right, here. Right, we have Thank to do a lot more. Yes. So, but we also have one of the crews, one of their jobs is they follow me around in this thing and they have these big sort of HEPA dust vacuum systems that are modified. So as I, as I hit this with compressed air, um, the dust comes flying off. Some of it, of course, gets sucked up by the AC. Some of it, sadly, probably gets redeposited somewhere else. But then a lot of it also gets sucked up in the Got other it. dust collections. So if we look at Stan, one of the ways, of course, you can do it is we try not to use dust cloths. Okay. Because dust cloths have a nap to them and they will uh, trap, will snag on things. Now things like casts, they're pretty sturdy. It's really not gonna be a big problem. But on original fossils, it can be a huge problem. But for instance, with these, you just... Just a few straw, I already see dust coming off of them. Yeah, there'll be a okay. little bit of dust on it. And then right. of course, you just have to stabilize it and so, brush it. So, it? so I stabilize it, then brush it? Yeah. Okay. So like kind of like this? Yeah, there you go. Oh, you look great, Stan. You look great. You're ready for your... Do you ever talk to him while you're doing this? Just sort uh, of not like... that I'm willing to admit on camera. <laughs> All right, I have my really cool extra special booties on uh, so I can get in here with David. David is wearing his... Uh, those are your dinosaur cleaning socks. Yeah, they have dinosaurs on them too. <laughs> so when you get in, in here, of course, we don't want to scuff or mar the platforms. So you either uh, we either wear booties or in my case, I'm, I'm old school, I wear socks, probably should be wearing booties, but uh, you need to get up here in something that's not gonna mar the surface. To reiterate, obviously, uh, don't do this. Do not stand on these platforms. David will notice, the other docents here will notice, the discovery guides will notice. Uh, look at everything, you know, from the, a safe distance that we've given you here, obviously. Don't, uh, don't try to disturb the, uh, the ancient fossils because it makes this guy mad. It does make me very mad. <laughs> and this fills me with rage because this is my girlfriend. Okay, this is Jurassic I, Mom. I don't get out a lot. Okay, what is um, what is Jurassic Mom? Let's go ahead and get Jurassic out of here. Jurassic so Mom is a Stenopterygius and uh, it's one of, I think, really the treasures of our collection here. It's one of my favorites. Uh, and when you come through this gallery, this part of the Jurassic, so we've got Holes Modern, Early Jurassic, we have some Solenhof and Late Jurassic, uh, all of these uh, fossils are original fossils. So what we've done here, it was sort of the concept behind the hall, is to take fossils, so natural history specimens, and put them in a fine art setting, which is why you can approach them very closely. When you look at all of the murals in our hall, all the murals reflect what the fossils are doing, except for Jurassic Mom. 
She's the only one where we broke that rule, and the reason is because her story is very sad. So Jurassic Mom, uh, and one of the reasons you always say, well, wh why do you call her a mom? Well, she is, and she has a lot of unborn ichthyosaurs. Um, we actually do have a couple fossils here where the moment of death is preserved. And that's kind of rare, and yeah. Jurassic Mom you know, qualifies. Now, how do you clean Jurassic Mom? Jurassic Mom is it's so easy to give you an answer to this, because all you do is very carefully. Okay. So, and of course, what that requires is, I allow people to come up on the platform here, and usually, again, I either use my prep volunteers, some staff, usually, to be honest, Jurassic Mom, I do it myself. Got it. So what we use, and these are great, we use them in the field too, very soft, Brushes. These usually, are makeup brushes. Usually folks. makeup brushes. These are makeup brushes. Makeup brushes are very useful in the field and they're very useful uh, just in museum work Got in it. general. And for doing these, it's very handy. And this, the very top, sometimes I'll use a more coarse brush because uh, A, you're not on the surface of the fossil and a lot of the dust actually really does settle in here. Okay. And then, of course, once you're done cleaning them, we'll have to come by and we'll have somebody either vacuum or sweep the uh, platform. The dander that comes off the dander, us, the dander, that, dander comes that comes down. off the people the that are cleaning. Comes, yeah, exactly. Okay. Don't touch the fossils. Don't touch the fossils. We, I've yeah. seen kids kind of like, you know, want to go, you don't, don't do that. Yeah, most people are pretty good. Um, when you go to see a fine arts museum, like, you know, if the, the painting is there, the Degas or the Renoir or whatever, people just know you don't go up and you don't touch the Degas. You just don't do that. You don't do this. Piece of art, folks. Don't yeah. touch me. Yeah, he is a piece of art. Actually, you are a living <laughs> art. You're totally there art. There we go. Maybe one day I'll be in a hall just so, like this. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs>
David will not let me touch because you only trust one person with this one. That's besides correct. yourself. And and I would trust myself, but I don't trust myself. Okay. So I do, uh, I have one of my volunteers is one of our prep volunteers. And this requires a very light touch, obviously. Uh, and sometimes you might use a little bit of a vacuum. So you hold the hose up, you don't put the hose on the fin, but you'll have it near the fin and you have to brush it. And of course you have to move around the fossil which means you have to know where your feet are, you have to know where your hands are, and you have to have- You can't move him out of here. Uh, no, actually we can't. Um, okay. I can cheat him a little bit, but not really. So they, okay. need to, they need to be able to get behind him and work on him there. And if you're here for mixers and elixirs or a party or something like that, don't put your drinks down on any of these uh, dinosaurs, because this guy gets mad. I do. I, I'm a nice guy, but, but you make me come down here. You make me do these things. So no drinks on the platform. Otherwise, I'm not so nice. Okay, so this is one, again, one of our casts. This is a Triassic period uh, reptile called Smilosuchus. And cleaning him is pretty straightforward. Uh, it just requires gentle brushing and maybe a little bit of vacuuming. And what, of course, you have to remember is to keep your hands and feet away from the dinosaurs, and particularly the dinosaur jaws, at all times. This would stress me out so much, seeing dust everywhere all the time. Now, every time I walk through the hall, I am going to be carrying one of these. And you're going to be just dusting. Put, and just have a constant just compulsion to dust everything in this entire hall. So fossils are straightforward. Because fossils, even though some of them are very delicate, they have a smooth surface and the dust will detach from them. Imagine if you have to dust feathers or taxidermy mounts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that requires a little bit more of a special rig, and that is um, a lot more time. All right, we are inside the Petrified Forest, inside the Maureen Hall of Paleontology. Now, a lot of people don't know about this part of the Hall of Paleontology. No, it's it a, gets gets uh, lost because people are looking at dinosaurs and stuff. It's people. Dinosaurs are very distracting. Yes. Uh, and the rest of the fossils here are just as fascinating. Um, and this is a nice gallery of some exquisite petrified wood. Cleaning these pieces is actually very simple because they're very stable. Usually we just use a brush technique. I like, see fingerprints on these. I don't, well, one of the things why this is here is people do touch these. <laughs> and this is one of the things that people do touch and it's really not gonna hurt the fossil. Got it. You know what, we have these forensic classes here now about fingerprints. They can get a lot start getting of fingerprints, fingerprints off of these. We're gonna yeah. find you people. Yeah, we'll hunt you down. One thing I've noticed through going about this cleaning session is that you don't use any chemicals. You no. don't use anything but these. No, that's correct. Okay. Why is that? I don't do any wet cleaning at all. Yeah. Um, one is because it leaves films. Two is because we don't really need to. There will be some point in the future, say when we, when we dismantle the dinosaurs, we do things like that. When we do that, I give them a very good cleaning. And I'll use some yeah. gentle solvents and things like that on them. But while they're out here like this, no. I, so, I knew somebody was going to ask, well, just use some Pledge, use some yeah, Windex. Yeah, Pledge, Windex, 409. Um, fabuloso. Yeah, Fabuloso, uh, uh, or Pine Sol. Or, yeah, you, know, you can't a, do a that with any of these things. Anything no. in this hall, no. you want to use something that's natural, something like this, it's non-invasive. Right. So there you have it, folks. Big thanks to David Temple for taking some time out of his day to show us how he cleans the fossils here inside the Morian Hall of Paleontology. I can't stop now.